here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share yet another update on my experience with the Microsoft Surface Pro 11 on the right and the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X on the left. Now these are two very different machines in that this is a tablet that can also be a laptop, whereas this is a traditional laptop. Both have OLED displays, at least the machines I'm reviewing, and by the way, I'll include links in the description for anyone interested in purchasing them. But the moral of the story here is really all about the performance of the processor powering them, and that is what makes them more alike than you could imagine. Both are driven by Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite chip. Of course, in the Microsoft Surface Pro 11, we have the highest end spec in this $1,500 tablet. Uh, keyboard does not come with it. This is the Flex Bluetooth, for those of you wondering, without the pen. Still waiting on that pen. And then with the Yoga, we have a slightly lower uh, skewed version of that chip. But the good news is, is that when it comes to ARM, specifically this processor, these, this brand new batch of Copilot PCs with AI, uh, the AI more of a gimmick to me than anything, it's really all about the performance of that chip. And it's all about battery life. Uh, performance is good. The beauty of both of these is that if you picked them up and you didn't know that they weren't being driven by Intel or AMD, you wouldn't know because the performance is that good. But they are inherently limited uh, and that is the rub, in my opinion, uh, for the extra battery life that we're getting out of both of these. And if you're wondering about that, uh, the battery life so far in the Surface Pro, both of these are easily 10-hour uh, machines, okay? That's where I'm going to put it. A lot of people are saying they're getting 13 or 14 hours. I'm not. Um, or they're saying they're getting, you know, something similar to that here. 14.5-inch uh, display, a little over 13 over here. I should say a little under 14. Uh, both are excellent machines but they really ultimately are all about battery life. It reminds me very much of the concept of netbooks and you know, manufacturers and Microsoft have found a way to make netbooks in 2024, but for much higher prices than netbooks were ever envisioned to be. And historically, netbooks were viewed as low-end, kind of junky, just content consumption um, and web browsing devices, kind of like tablets. And I think that's exactly what these represent. Uh, very similar to Apple products. And I say that because for years now, Apple's been running on ARM Silicon uh, with native software, and the uh, entire premise has been unmatched battery life. Performance is a different story because, for example, in my use case scenario, right now I would have to re-envision my entire life to enter the Apple ecosystem, and the software that I use, it would be, you know, turning myself upside down. Uh, but when it comes to using something that's inside the Windows ecosystem, None of that is going to happen, but it's not all roses over here. Uh, inherently, again, because we have moved to ARM architecture, we're relying on Microsoft's Prism uh, emulation layer, which does an amazing job of taking uh, x86 applications and making them run almost seemingly in a native manner. They're so quick, uh, even though, of course, they are not native. And that is the beauty of what Microsoft has accomplished in tandem with this new chipset. But again, uh, when it comes to the difference in the SKUs of these two processors, you may see differences on synthetic benchmarks, but I'm going to tell you right now, real-world use, you should only care about battery life, form factor, whether you want to have pen input. Both of these have touchscreens, by the way. That's what's going to determine really which uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite experience is right for you. But I like to draw the parallel to Apple because the entire premise with Apple was we're going to deliver amazing battery life, um, in our closed wall ecosystem. And that is absolutely an accomplishment. But when you try to do it with all of your different manufacturing partners, like Microsoft has to, unlike Apple, who makes all of their own hardware and doesn't allow anyone else to license it, it's a much bigger juggling act. Um, they're not just making software for their Surface Pro line, right? They're making it for every other Copilot PC that will be launched this year and, of course, throughout all of the future. And that is a very big undertaking that really Apple can't even imagine. It's a pro and a con uh, for both. There are you know, pros uh, as well as drawbacks for each manufacturer, meaning Apple and Microsoft, no question about it. And not, I'm glad the competition is there. We wouldn't be looking at ARM chips here if Apple hadn't done it first and succeeded. But inherently, as I said, for me going to something like an Apple product, I wouldn't be able to game anymore. There are so many things that would then require I still have a PC. I'm not interested in that dance. A lot of you are. Um, and that's, you're right, and, you know, as long as you're happy with what you got and you feel like you're getting your money's worth, that's all that really matters. 
But from the very start, when I first got these machines in, a lot of what I pointed to was that I felt like Microsoft was making the clear case for Apple users to come over to Windows. And I still stand by that because ultimately what these machines deliver on is all about, as I've already said, battery life and the fact that performance doesn't suck. But because of that emulation layer and the incompatibility, I just can't see a plethora of Windows users who are more performance-centric than the Apple users that I mentioned uh, formerly. I can't see those people willingly giving up battery, uh, excuse me, performance for battery life, um, especially if they're not road warriors. And most people are not road warriors. So that just doesn't make a lot of sense. But that doesn't mean I still can't appreciate having either of these machines and all of the niceties that come with now having uh, an ARM chip, not just the efficiency, but how quickly they turn on and off. Uh, they have brilliant DDR5 RAM uh, on board because that's part of having you know, an ARM chip like the X Elite on board. It's just there are a lot of advantages and they require a lot less cooling. Uh, but again, because this is not an X86, neither machine is an X86 machine, there are inherent drawbacks, as I've mentioned before. So when it comes to content consumption and, of course, productivity work, these are going to do a great job. But when it comes to more niche things, that's where things get a little bit dicey, and I'm not going to tell anyone this should be your main system. And that is why I draw the parallel to a netbook. So hopefully that's really clear. Now, I'm not saying Apple users have been on netbooks for the last however many years, but I kind of am, I guess, because... What I'm getting at here is that while those products are more mature and can do more than these, uh, they really did start, in my opinion, kind of as netbooks because it was all about battery life. And because I can't do what I want to do on them, I still view them kind of as netbooks. I know no Apple user would ever appreciate that or think that way, but sometimes you got to step outside the box. And for me, um, having more capability is having more, um, not less. That doesn't mean I want things sacrificed or sloppy or not running well. Um, battery life, again, for me personally, is only an exception if it's the difference between me being able, able to do something versus not. So eGPUs, you can't use that with this. Will that happen in the future? I'm sure it will. Um, certain drivers for more niche products, maybe your webcam, maybe your printer, maybe a capture card, maybe it won't work here. Maybe it will. You're not going to have that issue with an x86 Intel or AMD machine. And I think the most important point uh, that I'll make about the success of this platform of ARM with Windows, which I'm 100% behind, anyone who thinks that I'm making an argument against it is missing the point, is that this is going to finally deliver uh, the blow to Intel and AMD to make them step up their competition. Now, will they be able to match the pricing that I think, you know, Microsoft and Lenovo both enjoyed with the Snapdragon chip from Qualcomm? No. I, I just know they're not going to be able to match that because Qualcomm wants to eat this space. And in order to do so, they're going to be far more aggressive in the pricing of their processors than AMD or Intel, who are already established and already have the pie, so to speak, the proverbial one, right? It's really Qualcomm's job to steal as much of that pie as they possibly can. And that's a benefit to manufacturers like Microsoft, Lenovo, uh, you know, Asus, of course, HP, uh, Dell, the list goes on. So I think as consumers, we all absolutely win here because my experience with the Snapdragon X Elite so far has been great. It has vastly exceeded my expectations. Um, the AI component, really not that big a deal, in my opinion. I think it's a little bit of, of manure, but there's nothing wrong with marketing. And that too also... I said two, in case someone was curious, that two will also bode well for the future because I do think that's something that with time, all these machines are going to benefit exponentially from. But at least here in 2024, there can be no mistake that the ultimate benefit of having ARM inside Windows is that we finally are getting battery life that we otherwise have not seen. And that really is that 10 hour and up number. And that's amazing. But as I've stated, as long as we still have even minute incompatibilities or driver issues, that is where I'm going to say this reminds me of Apple because you're asking me to trade off, you know, the performance for battery life. And again, I know people will be in the comments saying, oh, no, 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 I can do everything with my Apple. Um, you can't game. And don't get me wrong. 
I hope that that changes because that will be better for the entire industry, but that's a big deal. And then there's you know a wide variety of software that I would not be able to run on an Apple machine, and that's why I look at Apple the way that I do. Um, if my only options are Apple's own software in a lot of realms, because those happen to be the best at what they do, that inherently means I have a lot less options. And to me, for me as a consumer, yes, in my opinion, having more options is a better thing unless all the options suck. And the options do not suck in the realm of Windows. So again, it's harder to do what Microsoft has taken on here uh, with all their partners and all the different hardware variations and uh, specifications and what manufacturers will try to do. But it's also much more advantageous to all of us. And so while I'm saying right now that these, both of these machines really remind me of netbooks at the end of the day because they just can't do the heavy lifting that I wish they could, that doesn't mean that I can't recommend them because look at how many people are using Apple products um, without knowing that they are limited. Um, the same can be said for Windows users who just aren't doing as much as they could and they don't need to. I mean, it's all about being happy with what you've purchased, right? And this brings me to another point you may notice between these two machines, which has nothing to do with the Snapdragon platform, the fingerprint magnet that the Lenovo is. You can clean this up. Um, and it's not that my hands are dirty, but whatever the finish was on this $1,200 Lenovo, and it's an amazing value, build quality is excellent. They just missed the mark with the fingerprint magnet stuff. So you can easily clean this up but it looks like I ate a cheeseburger on it already, whereas the Surface Pro, you can see, just I'll do the a whole hand test here. You know, the Surface Pro just does not collect fingerprints. And this is not a unique thing. It's a matter of the actual materials used and the paint job. Um, that's what boils down to what appears versus what doesn't. So definitely a higher quality product here on the right, but you're paying for it. You can see that in the pricing. Again, 1500 just for the tablet without the keyboard, 1200 for the whole machine out the door. Uh, but both are excellent choices. And ultimately, as long as you're picking this up, really, as I stated, for productivity and content consumption, you're going to be really happy. Uh, best in class webcams, like the best I've ever seen on any laptop, especially the Surface Pro. It outclasses all of them. Um, but the Lenovo is no slouch either. But that 1440p webcam on this machine is just, it reads like, uh, you know, the way it looks when you're on it is like a smartphone, uh, but a flagship. And that is another uh, nicety of everything that has been loaded into the Surface Pro 11. So I like what we see here, this entire push uh, for ARM architecture inside of Windows. It represents a revolution uh, that we're not going to realize right now. But down the road, we absolutely will have game-changing capability. And as I said, it will usher in competition that is sorely uh, lacking. Granted, we have Intel and AMD, but they're really not doing that much to differentiate from each other. And battery life is the one area where if they actually up their game, well, I wouldn't be bragging to all of you about what great battery life we get with Qualcomm chips, right? Which is not something anybody ever thought they would say after the Surface Pro X in 2019, because not only did it not have great battery life, the performance was atrocious. So, Two really nice machines for 2024 that represent the future of computing, in my opinion, not just for Windows, but for the world. Um, and really, they're bona fide netbooks. Very expensive ones, but maybe that's just adjusted for inflation. You do the math. After all, Apple set the stage. Battery life, at least for many of you, is more important than capability. Um, as long as it delivers on two things. Again, that content consumption and productivity work. And these do exactly that. Sorry about being repetitive, but... That is the real star of the show here in 2024 with Qualcomm uh, X Elite processors inside brand new Windows 11 machines like these. But you really can't go wrong as long as you understand that. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.